heavy little mess got very successful, making a whopping $7 million. So a sequel was inevitable, and over a year later, Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back was released. Now, I wasn't very fond of the original, and I can't say it's aged well. At all. So this could have gone one of two ways. Either it wasn't going to get any better with only some things changed, or the game would be expanded to a point where I would thoroughly enjoy it. And when you know it, holy shit, look at Crash, he looks so expressive, so clean, so realistically smooth, look at the scenery, oh my gosh, he's so smooth, the play is so amazing! And that was just the start. But let's talk plot. Neocortex is blasted away from the explosion in the last game, making the completion ending pointless, and lands in a cave where he finds... Crystals. Of course. One year later, he and his new assistant, Enjin, oh my gosh, his name is Enjin. We had N Brio. I wonder how many villains we can have with just N puns in the entire series. Oh. Well, that's kind of disappointing. What in the fresh hell is- Anyway, they discuss how they must gather the other crystals without any other allies they have with them. And apparently, Cortex has the great idea to ask an old enemy. Meanwhile, Crash is taking a nap with his sister Coco, where she asks Crash to get a new battery for her. And Crash is instantly teleported to a strange room where Cortex asks Crash to help him gather the crystals to save the world. Seriously, what makes him think he's actually going to go along with- Oh. Alright. Crash is an idiot. Well, I'm not, so I'm just gonna collect the gems instead. Man, these are actually really fun. No death restrictions, better bonuses, actual checkpoints that save your progress. This is really nice compared to Crash 1. Alright, got the gem. Oh look, he has a nice little dance. That's pretty neat. Oh no, no, Crash. I said bring me the crystals! Well, screw you, Cortex. Out the snow go. Ah yes, another awesome level. Pretty gorgeous, too. Ever mention that I like snow levels? No, seriously, they're pretty cool. Wait, that wasn't- Okay, next time got, do a little dance, and... Oh, no, no, Crash! To save the world, I need crystals. Crystals! Motherfucker, does it look like I want to listen to you? These look a lot better than your smelly-ass crystals, so buzz off. Anyway, up to Hang 8. Hey, a little boarding level, and holy shit, this music. Actually, the music for this game is actually really solid. Turtle Woods and Snowgo also had some pretty awesome music. Definitely a step up from the original. Oh, okay, uh, I didn't get a gem that time. Maybe I need to do something for that. There was a blue spot for Turtle Woods. Maybe I'll go back later. Look above the doorways. Above each, there is a big crystal shaped slot. The last time I remind you. Ugh, thank you. I don't really believe you, but thank goodness you shut up. Anyway, got the blue gem by not destroying any of the boxes, which was kind of cryptic, but either way, went back to Hang 8, got on the blue gem platform, got the gem, got the other gems in the other levels, and... Oh. I actually need the crystals to progress. Mother... So, you were helping Cortex gather crystals. Actually, no, Embryo, I was just gathering the gems. And then this asshole was pretty much forcing me to do his bidding. I miss it, I tell you, just look at me. How can you not believe this face? You can't. In a story. But he tells us that if we really want to save the world, we need to gather the gems instead of the crystals. But we'll be stuck here if we don't collect the crystals. So I have to collect both in order to save the world. Well, shit. But at least the crystals aren't hard to collect at all, and the gems are actually fun to get, like I said before. But I will say the color gems are... A bit cryptic, and I mean, we have guides, but I wonder how people from the 90s really thought on how to get these gems. You want to know how you get this red gem? You go to Air Crash, jump in these boxes to get to this oddly placed platform, which will teleport you to a secret room where you can get the gem. Actually, that's not too cryptic, since if you have the eye for that kind of thing, you can easily figure it out. Like, getting the blue gem was pretty easy because of this oddly placed bounce box. Though really, that one was so kind of cryptic. Every level has either one or two total gems. And of course, each level has a box gem that requires you to break every box in the level. And since dying isn't an issue, it's certainly a better and more fun experience. Some levels won't be available for you to grab since certain areas do require color gems and some require these warps like I stated earlier. However, some have a second gem which can be one of the five color gems 
jumps that involve time trials, which are admittedly pretty fun. And some involve these skull-like platforms that require you to not die until a certain checkpoint to appear called Death Roots. Named appropriately because not only do you need to not die to get to them, but you'll be dying so many times in these roots. Some of those are really obnoxious about deaths in boxes though, and they involve this new character called Polar. <laughs> get it? Because he's a polar bear? Don't you get it? Oh sweet mother of hell! I get it, I get it! No more dumb jokes, just go away! <laughs> go away! But seriously, if you love Hogwild, you'll love these le- Oh, son of a bitch, not again. Crash, crash. He's just a young polar bear. Have you seen the grown-ups? They're freaking horrifying. All right, enough of the jokes. Like Hogwild, the gimmick is getting the boxes and avoiding obstacles in an automated running level. But it's all ice. Getting boxes while on the ice is a nightmare, and seeing TNT and nitro boxes scattered will be the end of you in no time. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There are several types of boxes here. You have the standard boxes, bounce boxes, Aku Aku boxes, steel boxes, invisible boxes, and TNT boxes from the first game. But there are also graded crates that require this new belly flop move, which is oddly satisfying for another stray from the topic. And the newly created hell spot, I mean nitro boxes, which are a one hit damage dealing box and also like to appear in groups, jeez. In order to destroy them without getting bandages on your butt, there is a detonation switch in the level which destroys every nitro box. And again, it's oddly satisfying when that happens. Wonderful. Now, other than that, nothing has changed other than animations, but there are a couple of new techniques. Now, I talked about the belly flop, which, like I said, is oddly satisfying no matter how dumb it looks. But the other move Crash has in his disposal is the slide, which is super versatile even in itself. You can go onto these platforms with a crawl by crouching, which are other techniques that are introduced in this game, but you can slide to just get through it in a snap. You can also jump after the slide for more distance, but I also discovered the so-called glitch long jump by sliding and simultaneously hitting the jump and spin, which is a technique that I used to skip Road to Ruin Secret Warp. There are more enemies, and they are more varied than Crash 1 to be fair, but they aren't too much more interesting. Though to give credit, many have certain ways to be attacked unlike before, like these lizard enemies that require to slide, and these robots that alternate their weak points from either a jump or a slide. But the spin is all I really need for most of them, or the invincibility if given the opportunity. And while the level design hasn't changed much, including the pretty archaic 2D sections, the game does support the DualShock controller and lets your movements become a bit smoother. Great for 3D hallway levels and polar levels. And for the 2D section, you can still go back to the D-pad for better precision. And they did limit the pits with some invisible walls, so that's always nice. And there are also new level types, like the aforementioned polar levels, and also the ruin levels with these statues and the most blatant of Donkey Kong ripoffs, and Firefly levels, which aren't as prevalent, but are very interesting and does require fast yet careful play. But the second secret level can screw off with those stupid great crates at the end, even though I got through it with little issue. I'll never get why I did. And the last to note are the jetpack stages, which everyone says are the worst of Crash 2, but I have to say that... no, not really. Yeah, they're a bit stiff, but they're just fine, honestly. I kinda like them. Well, I guess there are also these... I think they're called mountain stages? Nothing to state other than, screw these jerks. The random box attacks are obnoxious, and the fact that they only need a belly flop to kill just sucks. And before I forget, the bosses are much better than Crash 1. Wait, Ripperoo? Why does he have a mustache? And a ponytail? And a book? I never really saw him much of a reader. Oh, there you go, much better. But yeah, every boss is pretty fun. Ripperoo is simple yet dangerous if you're too careless. Same with Tiny Tiger. Actually, no, he's kind of a joke. Kamala Brothers are a little mindless, admittedly, but still not too much of a pushover. Engine is a fun one where you can throw Wampa Fruit at his exposed rocket launchers. Which now that I'm thinking about it, if fruit is your biggest weakness, I'm pretty sure that's a pretty bad thing. Might want to step your game up for the next game, Engine. Master Cortex will be very displeased with your resistance. And Cortex? Actually, this fight kind of sucks. I see, it's not really much of a fight, you're just chasing him and hitting him before the goal. And the obstacles aren't even obstacles, just spin at him and voila, you're fine. But on all, we got every gem, so let's... Crash, what do you suppose happened to Cortex? 
And what about the cortex vortex? It's still up there. Okay, no, bullshit. I got every gem. Why don't I get an alternate? <laughs> you have acquired all of the gems. Incredible. <laughs> Crystals are not the only means of harnessing planetary energy. <laughs> the gems have that ability as well. And with them, I can destroy the cortex vortex forever. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's kind of unnecessary, but I don't care. Blessing time! You know, I'm actually glad I got everything. It was really fun, and now I have it on my save file for me to look back years and years later. Ah, shit. Ah, oh, well, I'll get to it later. But yeah, Crash Bandicoot 2 was certainly a milestone improvement over Crash Bandicoot. With all the stuff that didn't work and fine-tuning the rest, it makes for not only a solid game on the PlayStation, but a solid game even for today. When this gets uploaded, the Insane Trilogy will already be out, but I still think this game will be played even to this day. Hell, I'd see myself going back to it. And with that said, all we have left is Crash Bandicoot Warped. So until then... I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll play with you guys next time. Ah, the sweet smell of an all-day sucker.